To start off this series of how to dress like certain characters, I feel like the best character to start off with has to be this man in particular. Arguably the most popular webtoon character, especially if you have spent any amount of time on TikTok. Changing the game, one mullet at a time, I present to you how to dress like J. Joe. First of all, if you haven't seen my video on fashion and webtoon, I suggest you pause the video right now and go ahead and watch it. If this video appealed to you, then I guarantee that other video is a good watch before this. Anyways, to start off with, it is difficult to talk about how to dress like J. Joe without mentioning the phenomenon, pop culture icon that can be argued to have potentially superseded the webtoon itself in popularity, the J. Joe cut. It's hard not to see people having this haircut. Whether I'm walking in my campus at uni, at the shopping center, or at the barber shop, I swear, one out of every five Asian guys my age have the JJ cut. And I understand why. If you currently have short to medium length hair, the JJ cut was and is a trendy hairstyle that is easy to maintain, is stylishly messy, and is very in right now on platforms like TikTok. To ask for a JJ cut, you first need to have anything longer than short to medium length hair, and realistically, nothing curlier than type 3A hair. However, a lot of the elements of the cut can be replicated from my type 4A and curlier viewers, which could end up looking similar to what a lot of these D1 high school basketball players like Bronny James have. The J. Joe cut has shaved sides, nothing larger than a size 3 guard, as well as pointy sideburns. And then for the top and back, the JJ cut is essentially a short, layered mullet that doesn't hang too much on the back and maintains a little bit of bangs on the front. Styling the haircut is just ensuring that the mullet stays messy and the bangs look nice at the front. Variations to this haircut may include getting a taper on the sides instead of the pointy sideburns, something that I prefer, but really all comes down to preference. What's hilariously amazing about this cut is that in the story, Jay gets the haircut reluctantly after losing a bet to Owen shaving his head, for him to then get it fixed at a hairdresser's after Shelly stopped him midway through the shaving. Now, let's get on to the clothes. I've categorized Jay as having two main types of outfits in the series. I will be discussing both of them. The first type of outfit that I will talk about, I will now refer to as cruise control. Just like the cruise control of a car, this is characterized by Jay's comfortability and laid back nature whilst wearing this type of outfit. Another name for this outfit as well could be Jay the Chat. To my memory, Jay only dressing like this in part four of the webtoon, where in which his classmates are now dubbing him Jay the Chat. Anyways, for his cruise control outfits, here are two occasions where we can see Jay head to toe in gallery department fits. Gallery department is a very cool brand based out of LA that specializes in hand painted garments, ranging from shirts to workwear. I've been noticing a lot of gallery department in the last few years or so, especially with rappers rocking it lately. The pieces are decently expensive, huh? but knowing that it is hand painted does justify the price a little bit. In this outfit, we can see Jay wearing a light gray gallery department hoodie for his top with dark gray gallery department tracksuits for his bottom. You can tell the tracksuit is gallery based on the paint on the side. And lastly, to finish off the outfit, we have a pair of black and white van skate lows. As a rough estimate, as these items are sold out right now, this entire outfit would cost around $3,000 retail. And this gallery department outfit with a sweatshirt instead of a hoodie would likely cost around $2,000 total, costing less because this sweatshirt doesn't have the hand painted detailing. A side note though, peep the Chrome Hearts hoodie on Shelly styled with the Jordan 3s low-key outdoing Jay in style. Also to note, when Jay is in his comfortable outfits, he's usually wearing his glasses, something that may be important to you if you wear glasses and really want to complete this look. If you want to search online or at a shop for glasses like Jay's, then look or ask for black square plastic frames. Do make sure, however, that the fitting of the glasses is similar to Jay's, not too big and not too small. The way it fits on Jay is being a bit bigger, but regardless, not too big. Anyways, the inclusion of gallery department in these chapters was pretty unexpected for me when I was reading it, and I was pleasantly surprised especially to see them on Jay. 
whose fits aren't usually the most stylish in this series compared to characters like Owen, Dom, Joker, or lately Vinny. Vinny being someone in particular with mad fashion sense right now. Definitely going to make a video on him in the future. This leads me into his next type of outfit, which I will dub sports mode. Just like the sports mode of a car, this is characterized by its utility and ability to induce performance. In Jay's case, whilst riding his bike. The other name for this type of outfit, as you can guess, would be Jay the Eunuch. Jay, having worn these types of outfits from the beginning of the series, when he was labelled as a eunuch by the rest of the cast. The sports mode outfit can be seen in these outfits, where Jay is wearing a windbreaker jacket. Pun intended and not intended, because that's actually what it's called. Here we can see Jay in a black Nike windbreaker with matching Nike sweatpants and Nike visor. A good styling tip is that black on black on black can never really go wrong in my opinion. So if I was to suggest anybody watching who wants to dress like Jay Joe, the all black fits are never really a bad option. The only potential problem with all black fits is the homogeneity of the outfit being one color, potentially not looking too good. But this can be offset with a white undershirt, just like Jay is wearing. The undershirt being a bit oversized so that it can hang outside of the windbreaker. This allows for the torso to still be distinct from the legs. Jay's height and proportions are able to be shown off, the rule of thirds being in motion. All in all, this is a relatively inexpensive outfit, costing around a total of 200 US dollars, using generic prices for the fit. For a similar, but less eunuch-like outfit, here we have Jay in another Nike windbreaker. This time, a navy blue Nike Air half zip that could technically potentially be a tracksuit, but the cuffs on the jacket make it look more like a windbreaker material rather than the soft, tight on the wrist tracksuit material. This is then styled with some Essentials Fear of God shorts that fit short on Jay, just above the knees whilst riding his bike. Essentials is a brand that is very popular these days, seen worn by pretty much everybody. I still remember a time where Jerry Lorenzo's Fear of God was the hottest trend in 2016. The skinny distressed jeans, all of everything, and long line shirts. Just a small tangent, but I was surprised when I first saw the mainstream rise of Essentials and how it basically overtook the legacy of Fear of God. This fit looks fairly nice on Jay. The fit kind of reminding me of some JME shorts and jacket type of outfit. This outfit is more expensive than the last the shorts making the outfit cost around $300. For the last of the eunuch type outfits, here we have Jay in a half zip. Once again, made by Fear of God Essentials. This is then styled with a white undershirt, Converse skate lows, and really baggy or wide fitting trousers. These trousers in particular are quite stylish and exude the appearance of being comfortable and warm. Wide fitting pants seeing a resurgence as a result of the Y2K trend right now. This Essentials half zip track jacket will run you about $250 depending on where you are looking. All of these outfits are some of the best eunuch type fits Jay has worn throughout the series. This is a testament to how good the art style of Part 4 Windbreaker has been, which has resulted in some of the best outfits in the series. Not just from Jay, but from all of the characters. I'm looking at you, Vinny. Now for this part of the video, I will tell you how to dress like Jay. I will give you three outfits for both Jay the Chad and Jay the Eunuch to give you guys some inspiration or even just copy the outfit in its entirety. In these two categories, I will also be separating them into three tiers based on price. These tiers are expensive, which would be anything above 1k, mid tier, which includes brand name clothes that are not as expensive as the top tier and then Uniqlo tier, where I will only look at Uniqlo for the garments and then choose a general release sneaker for the shoes. First, for Jay's chat outfit. I think emulating his expensive gallery department outfit is the best option for this tier. To match his exact fit, make sure the top fits oversized and baggy. The oversized top is essential in making sure this outfit looks comfortable and effortless. For his shoes, in the webtoon, even with gallery department, Jay still wears his van skate lows, so I guess I would recommend them. However, if you want to stay true to the expensive tier and spend a little bit more money, you could swap the vans out for some low Rick Owens. 
costing around $1,000. Huh? For his glasses, a sort of expensive brand I would recommend for this tier would be Gentle Monster, a Korean eyewear brand with pretty cool pieces and advertising campaigns. Each one of their stores are kind of like art exhibitions. The one in the Sydney airport being one that I visited recently that is interesting to say the least. A pair of black frame Gentle Monster glasses costing around $300. So, a pair of Gentle Monster glasses, the gallery department top and bottoms, and some Rick Owens would bring the total cost of this outfit to just under 4.5k. For the mid-tier outfit, I would look at brands like Stussy for their sweatshirts. Most of their sweatshirts having a trendy fit and the designs are looking nice. Jay has worn Stussy in his other outfits before, and I think a Stussy sweatshirt would do the job very nicely. For sweatpants, I would probably match with Stussy sweatpants, just like Jay did with Gallery Department. For the Chad fit, make sure that the color of the top and pants are different, but still complementary. Black and gray, white and gray, different shades of gray, stuff like that. For the shoes, you can copy Jay's Van Skate Lows, a pretty obvious option at this price point. For his glasses, go for any odd brands at your local Specsavers, or if you want a ball on a budget, go for brands like Calvin Klein, which often have sales on their brand name glasses frames. All of these items bring the total cost of this outfit to about $300, including the shoes, but not the glasses. Not bad, considering that each piece of this outfit are staple pieces that can be styled into various outfits depending on your current wardrobe. For the Uniqlo tier, getting any combination of the sweatpants, sweatshirts, and sweat pullover hoodies would do the job. If you aren't shopping at Uniqlo in particular, the biggest thing I would look for in emulating this outfit is the weight of the top. Be careful for tops that are generally lighter in weight, as they will conform to your body and have a tighter look and fit. Not something we want for this type of outfit. Paying attention to the weight of the top and making sure it is heavy enough to flow atop your torso is a must for this outfit and my piece of advice for this tier. The Uniqlo slash cheap tier in particular, because at least with Stussy and Gallery Department, the weight of those tops are generally guaranteed to be what we are looking for. Now, let's get on to the Unique fit. For the expensive tier, if you want to buy expensive for the sake of being expensive, then an expensive windbreaker for this tier you could buy are these Balenciaga windbreakers. If you want a bit more practicality, but also a huge trend that just passed, I would personally go for an Arcturex windbreaker. Arcturex on me, no, we don't rock no Patagonia. Huh? Arcturex jackets are very good quality. And anybody with an Arcturex jacket will tell you, and make sure you know, is waterproof. I believe Arcturex jackets are meant for exploring and hiking, those activities alike. But became a little bit of a trend on TikTok and other places where fashion is discussed for its semi-cult-like following. Anyways, for the pants, matching with some wide-fitting Balenciaga track pants may be the right look, whilst also flexing your deep pockets. For the shoes, Jay in the eunuch fit still always only wears his skate lows, but is also seen wearing clip-in shoes used for cycling. So I guess for cycling shoes, a good pair of Shimano's would be a good choice. Although I really have no clue about cycling shoes. This tier is a bit ludicrous and over the top for no reason. Probably because this tier of outfit isn't very expensive to begin with. So instead of giving alternatives to an expensive outfit in the mid and Uniqlo tiers, I am instead giving an expensive alternative to a mid-tier outfit, which kind of doesn't make sense. <laughs> Anyways, this would be my choice for an expensive J. Joe eunuch outfit. That would run you over $3,000 easily. For mid-tier, any stock standard Nike windbreaker would do the job for a good price, not costing anything higher than $200. If you want to get fancier, this Nike Stussy collab windbreaker that Jay wore in part 4 would also be a nice choice and would cost around $400. Naturally, Nike tracksuits would match with the Nike windbreaker, hopefully matching with the Nike tick with a matching Nike hat, as to really get across the fact that you believe checks are over stripes. An alternative outfit to this would be with essential shorts and a windbreaker for a JME-esque fit. Maybe matching it with an Essentials Windbreaker as to do a cute matchy-matchy again. 
Anyways, this tier of outfit with cycling shoes or skate lows would cost somewhere around the $300 to $700 range, depending on if you go for the Stussy collab or not. And lastly, for the Uniqlo tier, here are some nice windbreaker tracksuit combos you can come up with based solely off of Uniqlo items. Make sure when buying your windbreaker that there is no fluff or feathers as that would make it a puffer jacket, which isn't what we are looking for. Once again, make sure that the windbreaker has enough weight to it to give the proper look on your body and not a tight tracksuit look on the top. So, that was my video going over how to dress like J. Joe from Windbreaker. If you have any suggestions on who I should make a video on next, please drop it down below in the comments. If you haven't already, then please watch my video on the fashion and webtoon. It's a good video, trust. Can you hear the drums of liberation? Thank you for watching. Bye.